Hey class, welcome to MedSearch 2. Today you're going to be learning about alterations in oxygenation and perfusion that is related to obstructive and constrictive respiratory conditions. The exemplars that we are going to be covering in this topic includes atelectasis, which simply means collapse of lung tissue, asthma, inflammation of the airways that can be very dangerous for your patients, and COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. COPD is a chronic um, end-stage um, respiratory condition, which can also be referred to as CAL, chronic airway limitation. Smoking is usually the primary cause of this disease, and that's why we want to teach a lot of patients about um, health maintenance and prevention of disease. You want to help them with smoking cessation um, strategies. Patients uh, will have symptoms of chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and or asthma. Some interesting facts, COPD is the third leading cause of death in the USA. Um, it, COPD results from chronic lung disease which causes remodeling of the lung structures. If you remember from your anatomy and physiology, um, your lung structures compose alveoli which increases the surface area and they're supposed to be compliant so that gas exchange can happen seamlessly. What happens with COPD patients is that they have a loss of compliance. Um, they have increased actylectasis, actilect I'm sorry, which is basically the collapse of the lungs. They'll have increased mucus production and loss of cilia. Cilia is supposed to sweep away the impurities that your body wants to get rid of. Um, and if you remember, mucus is a product of um, waste. So if you're having increased mucus production and less cilia, that means that you're gonna have your airways obstructed because you're not able to get rid of all that impurity. This eventually results in a change in bronchial and chest structure because there's chronic airway trapping and that eventually is gonna result in the barrel chest. So that is your patient that has like um, a barrel chest that has very difficult um, time inhaling and exhaling. And that's where you as the registered nurse comes in. Um, chronic bronchitis um, characteristics, you might find that patient is obese. Your patient might have frequent coughing and expectoration of um, mucus. Use of accessory muscles. An accessory muscle is a muscle that, not, that is not primarily responsible for movement, but does provide assistance. So the accessory muscles that we're talking about, if you remember your anatomy and physiology, includes your sternalis, accessory solus, extensor, and um, you know all the muscles that are around your lungs that would otherwise not be used for breathing, um, you will see your patients using an increased work of breathing. You will also find that your patients um, exhibiting lung sounds that are caused ronchi and wheezing might also be had in auscultation because that is the inflammation. So the airway is being um, the air is being trapped in the airway and there's reduced gas exchange, and that results in wheezing. Patients may also have signs of right heart failure, um, which is known as call pulmonale. You remember that from second um, semester, and um, Pulmonary heart disease or core pulmonary is the enlargement and failure of the right ventricle of the heart. Um, so this is happening because of an increased vascular resistance and high blood pressure in the lungs. So your pulmonary hypertension patients. And this can also be incompatible with life. In your chronic emphysema patients, you might find that a patient has a wasting syndrome. So they're very thin. Um, with a barrel chest, so the chest is wide, but the patient is thin. Um, little or no cough or expectoration. Breathing may be assisted with past lip and use of accessory respiratory muscles. And patients might lean over in a tripod position to help them breathe a little bit better. The chest might also have some hyperresonant and wheezing sounds when you auscultate it. And then you might hear some very distant heart sounds and that can be problematic because if you remember, your ventricles help with perfusion of all your body cells. So if there's a problem with um, how they are able to contract, then you're going to have um, diminished cardiac output. So COPD is diagnosed based on history and physical examination and performing a pulmonary functioning test. 
Um, it will be characterized by three primary sim symptoms. This is important, dyspnea, chronic cough, and sputum production. Um, if you remember, dyspnea is just your patient's awareness of being uncomfortable with breathing, which may also be exhibited with shortness of breath. Um, slide 8 is just an image that shows you um, the sequelae of the disease, so the air trapping, the hyperinflation, the dyspnea, and so on and so forth. So it's just a pictorial image to help you understand if you're having a little bit of trouble with the concept. And slide 9 just talks about what slide 8 is showing you in a picture form. And this is an example of an adult with a normal chest in slide 10. And then right next to it is an adult with a barrel chest. If you look at the x-ray image on this slide, um, it also shows the air trapping, um, which will result in prolonged exhalation, um, which you can hear throughout the chest. And then you're going to have your adventitious um, breath sounds that I talked about earlier, such as ronchi cause crackles and wheezes. Systematically, COPD can manifest itself um, in decreased muscle mass, hypoalbuminemia, and if you remember, albumin um, is an indication of how much protein is in your patient's body. So your patient with muscle wasting, such as in emphysema, might have hypoalbuminism. So when you think about it, um, all our cells are made out of mitochondria, which is protein, and healing happens when we have a, a healthy protein level. So remember, your albumin level needs to be at at least three. If you have a patient with chronic emphysema, they might be susceptible to such things such as um, pressure ulcers, and then the pressure ulcers might be um, difficult to heal because they have no albumin in their system. So this type of patient can become very difficult to manage. You also want to um, think about your patients possibly developing osteoporosis, um, anemia, depression from the chronic condition, and then um, they might also have mild co cognitive impairment because again, if you're not oxygenating well, if you remember in second semester and first semester, oxygenation, um, poor oxygenation, the first sign of a problem might be altered mental status. So if your patient is in this chronic state, they might start having um, decreased mental function. So you want to make sure that you're doing good assessments of the thorax, your lungs, hyperinflation, um, barrel chest is going to result, and it's gonna be an increased anterior to posterior diameter as uh, depicted in the image in slide 10. And your patient might have wheezing, decreased breath sounds, um, hyperresonance on percussion, um, prolonged expiration, cause crackles, and then you might also see intercostal retractions when you're doing your assessment. Slide 12 just goes a little bit into detail. And size, slide 13. So as mentioned earlier, smoking is the number one cause of um, COPD. And usually um, smoking is calculated in pack years. That is the number of packs per day smoked times the number of years the person has smoked. So a person who has smoked an average of two cigarette packs a day for 20 years has a smoking history of 40 pack years. So that's important to understand just to see how long your patient has been in this um, state of not being compliant with um, not smoking. So according to the 2011 um, guidelines, and I do apologize, they come out you know, a little bit on a delayed uh, trajectory, a history of more than 40 pack years of smoking is the best single predictor of air, airflow obstruction. So um, you want to also see if your patient is able to walk a six minute um, walk test. If they're unable to, that might just show you that they are not oxygenating very well. So treatment of COPD, you want to think about nutritional support 
And um, the reason you want to support your patient nutritionally is um, we talked about albumin with the healing process. You also want to make sure that they're drinking enough fluids just to help thin the secretions. And they also might benefit from pulmonary rehabilitation. It's never too late to stop smoking. And um, you also want to make sure that a patient is um, taking regular peak expiratory flow meter tests because um, that will help to improve the patient's functional status and quality of life, preserve optimal lung function,